Almighty God says, For the sake of your fate, you should seek the approval of God. This is to say, since you acknowledge that you are a member of the house of God, you ought then to bring peace of mind to God and satisfy him in all things. You must, in other words, be principled in your actions and conform to the truth in them. If this is beyond you, then you shall be detested and rejected by God and spurned by every man. Once you have fallen into such a predicament, you cannot then be counted among the house of God, which is precisely the meaning of not being approved of by God. Amen. 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 God requires that we do things with principle and in line with the truth. It is also our obligation as believers. We can't gain God's approval without being up to this standard. That's right. That's right. In the past, I was always held back by my corrupt disposition. I didn't act or speak with principle. When I discovered false church leaders or workers, I didn't expose or report them. And this delayed the work of God's house. I eventually learned through experience how important it is to do things with principle. Yeah, it, it is. Our church leader put me on writing duty last summer to have me help the team leader with the team's work. I'd been dismissed from my previous duty about three months before. So I gave heartfelt thanks to God for giving me another opportunity. I really treasured this chance, and I wanted to rely on God in undertaking this work. Thanks for the The team leader was the one who briefed me on how the team had been working. And I saw they didn't have enough hands to edit documents. This really impacted their progress. So I suggested a few brothers and sisters so we could discuss who would be best suited to help us handle that particular duty. But his response to me was, there is no rush, take it easy. Put a few together first and then we'll see. Seeing how nonchalant he was, that made me nervous. There weren't enough people on the team who understood the truth and had good caliber. And this had already impacted the work. How could he say, take it easy? Wasn't that being irresponsible? Right. I felt like I had to bring it up with him. But then I thought, he's the one in charge. He's been doing this duty longer than me, and he understands more principles. He should have a good sense of how to arrange things. I just joined the team, and everything is new to me. If I start running my mouth, won't he say I'm being pushy and out of line? Forget about it. I'll just wait and see what happens. After a little while, I discovered that he was really lax about training team members and he wasn't principled in assigning the tasks. Some brothers and sisters would be doing a certain duty, and without thought for the overall situation, or for an individual's strengths, or what kind of duty they were suited for, he'd just arbitrarily assign them to another team. This impacted the work of God's house and our progress. I mentioned to him that his arrangements were unprincipled and even inappropriate but he just kept on anyway. What I really wanted was to fellowship with him, to dissect and reveal the nature of what he was doing. But then I thought, I'm new to the team. If I'm constantly suggesting things, won't he say that I'm controlling and unreasonable? So I didn't dare to mention it to him again. Before long, I got a letter from a church leader asking me if we'd found anyone to edit documents and if the team leader and I were working well together. This worried me quite a bit. I didn't know how to respond. If the team leader found out that I had told the church leader that he didn't do practical work, how could we possibly keep working together? On top of that, I didn't know what the others on the team really thought of him. I had no idea. If my perception was off, then I was afraid the church leader would say I was biased against the team leader. But if I didn't speak up, I'd feel I wasn't being honest or protecting God's house. 
After considerable thought, I decided to find out what the others thought about the team leader first and respond to the letter after that. I saw Brother Young in a gathering. He said he'd been on the team for several months and the team leader had never been, well, very responsible. He didn't keep abreast of the work or follow up in a timely fashion and he didn't guide his brothers and sisters or help them enter into the principles. There were also some urgent documents he hadn't assigned to people in time. And he was really casual about others' reminders. He also said he hardly ever heard him share fellowship and gatherings about reflecting on himself or how to practice following God's words when he had an issue. Instead, he just spouted doctrine. He was a smooth talker, but he didn't do any real work at all. I thought to myself, well, it looks like he's just muddling along. He's not doing any real work. He won't accept the truth or even any suggestions from others. Isn't that just being a false leader or worker? If he keeps neglecting this important duty, when he's responsible for so much, he could really damage the work of God's house. This made me realize how serious the problem was that I was facing and that I should tell a church leader and do it without delay. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. But then I thought, if I do decide to report this now, and he doesn't end up being replaced by the church, he might make things difficult for me or even dismiss me from my duty. I've been doing devotionals and self-reflection for three months. I haven't been here long. If I'm dismissed now, will I get a shot at another duty? They say the nail that sticks up gets hit first. I shouldn't say anything. I'll wait a little while until someone else reports him, and then I'll chime in. That way, I won't stick my neck out. Well, then what happened? That's not the whole story, right? Honestly, I just wanted to muddle through it with one eye open and one eye closed. But God sees into our hearts. I had this uncomfortable feeling on my way home. My conscience was pricked and I felt it. It was the Holy Spirit reprimanding me. So I prayed to God and asked him to enlighten me. After my prayer, I thought of these words of God. You say you are mindful of God's burden and will defend the church's testimony, but who has really done so? Ask yourself, are you considerate of his burden? Can you practice righteousness for him? Can you stand up and speak for me? Can you steadfastly put the truth into practice? Are you bold enough to fight against all of Satan's deeds? Would you be able to set your emotions aside and expose Satan for the sake of my truth? Can you allow my intentions to be fulfilled in you? Have you offered up your heart in the most crucial of moments? Are you someone who does my will? I had no response to this, and I was feeling really upset. I was always talking about being considerate of God's will and upholding the church's work. But when something violated the truth and harmed God's house, I upheld my own interests. I knew the team leader was slipshod in his duty and didn't do any real work and had already hurt the church's work right. and I should tell the church leader. But I just protected myself. I was afraid he'd get back at me or I'd lose my duty. I shrunk back at the crucial moment. Turning a blind eye, I pretended not to know what was going on. I wasn't protecting God's house. I was so selfish and despicable, without any humanity or reason. So when I got home, I prayed to God in seeking. What really made me not practice the truth or uphold the church's work? Then I read this passage of God's words. Most people wish to seek and practice the truth, but much of the time, they merely have a resolution and the desire to do so. They do not possess the life of the truth within them. As a result, when they come across evil forces or bad people doing evil deeds or false leaders and antichrists violating principles, 
thus causing the work of God's house to suffer losses and harming God's chosen ones, they lose the courage to stand up and speak out. What does it mean when you have no courage? That you are timid or inarticulate, or that you do not understand it and dare not speak up? It is none of these. It is that you are being controlled by several kinds of corrupt dispositions. One of these dispositions is cunning. You think of yourself first, thinking, if I speak up, how will it benefit me? If I speak up and displease someone, how will we get along in the future? This is a cunning mentality, right? Is this not the result of a cunning disposition? Your satanic corrupt disposition is controlling you. Your mouth is moving in spite of you. Even if you want to tell the truth, you are both unable and afraid to do it. You cannot commit even one ten-thousandth of the things you should do or say and the responsibility you should take. Your hands and feet are bound by your satanic corrupt disposition. You are not in charge at all. Your satanic corrupt disposition tells you how to speak, and so you speak that way. It tells you what to do, and so you do it. You do not seek the truth, but just pray in secret, building up your determination, making resolutions and swearing oaths. And what has come of all of this? You are still a yes man. I won't provoke or offend anyone. If it's none of my business, then I'll keep away. I won't say anything about things that have nothing to do with me. If anything harms my interests, pride or prestige, I still won't pay it any attention and will approach all of it cautiously. I mustn't act rashly. The nail that sticks up gets hit first, and I'm not that stupid. You are controlled by your corrupt dispositions of evil, cunning, hardness, and hating the truth. They are running you into the ground and are harder to bear even than the golden hoop the Monkey King wore. Living under the control of a corrupt disposition is so exhausting and excruciating. Amen. Amen. God's words very incisively revealed my cunning and selfish satanic dispositions. When I initially brought up the lack of competent people in the team, and the team leader was unruffled and did nothing about it, I knew very well it would impact the church's work. But I didn't dare say more, afraid that he'd say I was overstepping and dislike me. Later I saw that he switched people around without any principles, robbing Peter to pay Paul and damaging our work. But still I didn't mention it, I just glossed over it. I knew I should say something, but I was afraid to expose him. When I spoke with Brother Young and he told me more about him, I had no doubt that he wasn't doing practical work and wouldn't accept the truth. He was just a false leader, and I should report it to the church leader right away. Still, I was afraid he'd take my duty away from me, so I tucked my tail and ran, again, just to protect my own position. I was so selfish and devious. Every time I saw one of his problems, I didn't dare expose him or tell a church leader. The work of God's house was disrupted as a result. I'd been living by satanic poisons like every man for himself, and the devil take the hindmost. The nail that sticks up gets hit first. Might makes right, and a county official can't order people around like a local one can. My view was positively absurd, and I was more and more self-interested and devious. I was on my guard, tiptoeing around in everything I did, protecting my own interests at every turn, afraid of being held responsible for any trouble caused. I couldn't stand the thought of being at a loss. It was so hard for me to utter a true word, to say what was really going on. I didn't have the guts to report and expose a false leader. I was firmly bound and controlled by these satanic dispositions and poisons, both physically and mentally. I couldn't tell the truth, and I had no righteousness at all. It was such a cowardly way to live. I really experienced just how absurd these satanic poisons are. And when I was living by them, everything I did went against the truth and opposed God. I didn't have any human likeness. Before I knew it, 
it was time for the church to issue work arrangements. We were told again that if any evildoers and antichrists or false leaders who weren't doing practical work had been discovered, they should be reported to protect God's house. That's the responsibility of God's chosen ones. I felt awful when these requirements from God's house were put before me. I was well aware that we had a false leader on our team, but I hadn't dared report him. How was I worthy of being one of God's chosen? I looked for some words of God pertinent to my state, and then I found this. What is the attitude that people should have in terms of how to treat a leader or worker? If what he does is right, then you can obey him. If what he does is wrong, then you can expose him, and even oppose him, and raise a different opinion. If he is unable to do practical work, and is revealed to be a false leader, a false worker, or an antichrist, then you can refuse to accept his leadership, and you can also report and expose him. However, some of God's chosen people do not understand the truth and are particularly cowardly, and so they do not dare do anything. They say, if the leader kicks me out, I'm finished. If he has everyone exposed or forsake me, then I will no longer be able to believe in God. If I leave the church, then God will not want me and will not save me. The church represents God. Do these ways of thinking not affect such a person's attitude toward those things? Could it be true that if the leader expels you, you cannot be saved? Is the question of your salvation dependent upon your leader's attitude toward you? Why do so many people have such a degree of fear? If as soon as a false leader or an antichrist threatens you, you do not dare to report it higher up, and even promise to be of a single mind with the leader, then are you not done for? Is this the sort of person who seeks truth? Not only do you not dare to expose such wicked behavior as might be committed by satanic antichrists, but on the contrary, you obey them and even take their words as the truth to which you submit. Is this not the epitome of stupidity? Amen. These words from God brightened my heart. I'd been afraid to report the team leader, mainly out of fear that he'd make things difficult for me if I offended him, or I'd lose my duty. As if I thought he got to determine my fate and determine my duty. It was an absurd way of looking at it. Whether or not I was dismissed, or what my fate held, were in God's hands. No human had the final say. That's, That's right. right. False leaders and antichrist can't control that. God's house isn't like the world. Here, truth and righteousness are what reign. False leaders and antichrists can't get a foothold in God's house. They may gain power for a time, but ultimately, they will be exposed and eliminated. Exactly. The church dismissed and eliminated many false leaders and antichrists in the past. I understand that well. But when one of those appeared in my circle, and I needed to report him to protect the interests of God's house, I just shrank back. I preferred to be Satan's little lackey. I was just being weak and cowardly. I didn't understand God's righteous disposition, and I didn't see that he rules and sees everything. I was afraid of offending a man, but not God. How was that having a place for God in my heart, I read another passage of God's words after that. If a church contains no one who is willing to practice the truth, and no one who can stand witness for God, then that church should be completely isolated, its connections with other churches severed. This is called burying death. This is what it means to cast out Satan. If a church contains several local bullies, and they are followed by little flies who can't tell what they are. And if the congregants, even after having seen the truth, are still incapable of rejecting the binds and manipulations of these bullies, then all those fools will be eliminated in the end. These little flies might not have done anything terrible, but they are even more deceitful, even more slick and evasive. And everyone like this will be eliminated. Not a single one shall remain. Those who belong to Satan will be returned to Satan, while those who belong to God will surely go in search of the truth. This is decided by their natures. Let all those who follow Satan 
perish. No pity will be shown to such people. Let those who search for the truth be provided for and enjoy God's word to their heart's content. God is righteous. He would not show favoritism to anyone. If you are a devil, then you are incapable of practicing the truth. If you are someone who searches for the truth, then it is certain that you will not be taken captive by Satan. This is beyond all doubt. Amen. Reading his words, I could really feel God's holy, righteous, unoffendable disposition. He won't abide false leaders and antichrists disrupting the work of his house and harming his chosen. He also hates those who fail to practice the truth, who don't protect the interests of God's house when those people appear. If they don't repent, they'll all end up eliminated and punished as well. That's right. Mm -hmm. I thought about how I already knew the team leader was a false leader, but I didn't practice the truth or have the courage to report him. It was all for my own interests. I bowed to Satan time after time, standing on its side, indulging and shielding that false leader at the expense of the work of God's house. I had a part in the evil that he was doing. I was enjoying the truth that God bestows and eating and drinking from his table. But at that critical moment when Satan was wreaking havoc, I failed to protect the interests of God's house. I bit the hand that fed me and favored the enemy. That was a betrayal of God, and it seriously offended his disposition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thinking of these words of God, let all those who follow Satan perish, left me feeling terrified. I knew if I didn't repent, I'd be eliminated by God along with the false leader. I saw the nature and serious consequences of failing to report a false leader. And I hated myself for being so selfish. I hadn't protected God's house at all. I was lacking humanity. I then came before God in prayer. Oh God, I am so selfish and devious. I saw a false leader in the church that I never reported or exposed. I covered up for him and indulged him and acted as Satan's servant just to protect my own interests. I should be punished. Dear God, I will never do that again. I wish to repent. Amen. Amen. Please give me strength so I can practice the truth, report and expose that false leader and uphold the church's work. Amen. I read these words from God in my devotionals the next day. You must learn how to dissect your thoughts and ideas. Whichever things you are doing are wrong, and whatever behaviors of yours God would not like, you should be able to reverse them immediately and rectify them. What is the purpose of rectifying them? It is to accept and take on board the truth while rejecting the things within you that belong to Satan and replacing them with the truth. You used to rely on your corrupt dispositions such as cunning and deceptiveness, but now you do not. Now when you do things, you rely on attitudes, states, and dispositions that are honest, pure, and open. Once the truth has become your life, if someone blasphemes against God, has no reverence for him, is slipshod in their duty, or interrupts or disturbs the work of God's house, then upon seeing this, you will be able to approach it according to the principles of the truth, by discerning what should be discerned and exposing what should be exposed. Amen. 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 God's words showed me the most basic element of faith is having an honest heart practicing the truth, protecting God's house, and doing things by principle. That's how we can bring God joy. I knew I had to practice the truth and report our team leader in accordance with principle. And so I wrote out everything he'd done accurately and in detail and gave it to a church leader. 
After verifying everything, the church leader confirmed that he had been doing his duty carelessly and hadn't been doing any real work. He was a false leader and was dismissed from his duty. Thanks be to God. I felt a sense of peace when I was notified of that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That experience showed me how righteous God really is and that in his house, Christ and the truth reign. Right. That's right. No matter how high someone's position, how great their seniority, they must submit to the truth and to God's words. Those who don't won't be able to stand firm in God's house. They'll be eliminated in the end. Amen. Amen. Only being honest, practicing God's words, and being principled is in line with God's will and gains His approval. That's what I learned from my experience of reporting someone. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This experience really was awesome.